Conservation of biodiversity. Today we are losing about 1500 species every two months and this is a very huge number that is we are losing 15 that means 750 species every month. It is impossible for nature to compensate for this rapid loss and therefore it becomes extremely important to conserve this threatened biodiversity. Biodiversity conservation is the scientific management at its optimal level and derives sustainable benefit for both the present and the future and there are only two ways of conservation of biodiversity one is in situ and one is ex situ in situ means on site while ex situ means off site conservation so what is in situ and ex situ conservation in situ first of all protection of species in their natural habitats is considered as in situ conservation so wherever they are living we are protecting them in their natural habitat examples are national park wildlife sanctuary biosphere reservoir etc ex situ conservation means protection in a place away from their natural habitats so we are bringing from their natural habitat to some other places and they are, then we are trying to protect them into into other places for example botanical gardens for example zoo etc are the some of the examples so let's talk about the in situ conservation in in situ conservation there are three methods one is national park second is wildlife sanctuary and third is biosphere reservoir the main objective of the national park is to conserve conservation of the species of a habitat with minimal or very low intensity of human activities that means in national parks human activities are not allowed or this is the core zone so no person resides in the park other than the public servant on duty and persons permitted by the chief wildlife warden wildlife sanctuary it is the conservation of species and habitats by manipulative management that means if something is not going good then people can manipulate the things and then and there also no person resides inside the park other than the public servant so this is also including core zone buffer and restoration zone while the biosphere reservoir is the conservation of natural reservoir and the improvement of the relationship between human and the environment so in this case both natural and human influenced ecosystem exist together so it contains core buffer and restoration as well as transition zones these are some of the national parks in india and these are some of the photographs of the national parks from india these are some of the wildlife sanctuaries in india so what is biosphere biosphere is the different different zones of one particular area which consists of three main three main zones like core area which is uh, undisturbed and legally protected ecosystem so nobody is allowed inside the core area secondly buffer zone the buffer zone is the area where human beings can interact with the with the animals and plants so it is dedicated to research and educational studies or activities and last one is a transition zone where the human beings are allowed to do any kind of any habitation agriculture re re recreational or activities or any kind of activities which can occur there so these are three zones of the biosphere so what are the advantages and disadvantages of in situ conservation first of all it gives a long time long term protection secondly it is also better opportunity for the conservation as well as evolution and also it is cheaper and what are the disadvantages proper protection against environmental pollution may not be enough in natural type of ecosystem that means even after such protection they will be affected by the pollution let's talk about the ex situ conservation ex situ conservation there are many things like genes bank this is the particular area where we can store the genes of each and every species secondly botanical garden these are some of the gardens where we can say we can conserve the plants from different different geographical areas next is the dna technology that is we can manipulate the dna of these things and finally the tissue culture tissue culture means growing complete plant from one small tissue of the plant 
so this can be done easily with the help of a small petri dish and there is a media so we keep generally the tissue inside the media for some time and after several days then it start the, the cells from the tissue starts growing and it forms the callus and finally there are roots coming from the callus and then the plant grows from only one piece of the tissue plant tissue so this is plant tissue culture similar similar to this there is also animal tissue culture where we are growing different organs of the animals with the help of the tissues only so what are the advantages and disadvantages of ex situ conservation it is also giving a long term conservation secondly the species survive longer and may breed more offspring than usual and thirdly the quality of the offspring is improved because of the genetic techniques and so required breeding of hybrid species is also possible so we can mix two animals or two plants also disadvantage it is not a viable option for protection of the rare species due to human interference and it can be adopted only for few species not for all kind of species overprotection may result in loss of natural occurrence so these are some of the conservation methods